this series we'll build each kit from the Fantasy Village set by Battle Systems, discussing any construction pitfalls and build mistakes as well as kit specific build tips and possible conversions. Once everything is built we'll test a variety of methods to colour the edges of the terrain and then finally conclude with an in-depth overall review video of the whole Fantasy terrain set. Follow along and consider subscribing if that sounds like something you don't want to miss. If you haven't already, I recommend watching my introductory video to this series where I cover a few really key tips that will be relevant to this build and the others. So here we've got the thatch cottage. Two sheets, different artwork on both. So I'm going to start by taking the walls out, basically following the video from Battle Systems again. This should be quite a straightforward build. Open up these windows as well. Uh, this one hinges on the centerpiece, so you need to be a bit more careful with that. And I recommend building these in a in a circle, <laughs> going clockwise or anti-clockwise. Unless you've got the ones where you have little gables hanging over, in which case, clip those ends first. This one doesn't, so I'm going to go round just clockwise. Uh, we'll have the roof going this way, like they have on the Battle Systems video. Okay, there's the main frame. Right, chimney next. Be careful with this piece, yeah, there's a few little intricate bits on there. Chimney and furnace. So after doing the chimney on the top of the other house, I know they've got to be a bit careful with these. So turn those around carefully. Okay, so you need to take this piece out. That's loose. They need to just go around very carefully. Yeah, you can see if you're not careful that some that can delaminate a little bit. I'll just show you how, where it started. In there, it's starting to delaminate a little bit. If you know that it's going to happen, it's kind of fine because you can just be careful. I can see there actually on the, the way it creases. Not a perfect crease, so what I'm going to do is just run the run the knife down there a little bit. These would have all been die cut to certain depths, so I guess it is possible that if the blade blunts a tiny bit it might not go in quite as far as intended. There we go, and that'll go there. Oh that's nice, yeah, so you can see got like a key and a groove there where that'll end up sitting in. Yeah, that's a nice touch actually rather than having two straight pieces meeting. stays there and that goes there. Okay, yep. Yeah. That's gonna go over the top of there. So get the furnace. Oh, see there's a line. Just be careful bending that over. Now I think there's a bit of a knack to this, I remember just watching the video, so oh yeah that goes down there. So we want that to go like that, so Up and in. There's little tabs in there. And then in there. Okay, cool, yeah, nice. Tell you what, fair play, that's... That would have taken a fair bit of working out. Okay, so you can see there's a groove down here. And groove down here so effectively this is going to be inside the house and the chimney is going to be outside the house. I kind of just need to get that over there so it's going to fit in these grooves. It's tight. There we go. 
not complaining that it's tight because you want it to get in there and then you want it to stay in there. Okay, there, that's pretty cool. Like that. Yep. Okay, onto the roof next. Got the lines there. Okay, so yeah, that's inside the building. So same as the previous roof, just wanna give them a little bit of a bend. It's a really quite a clever design. I mean it's quite straightforward I suppose, but it works well. I'll ask, yeah, gotta be careful. So I can alright, straight away I can tell that, that one was cut through slightly more than on that one. So that does actually tell me that maybe some of the issues I was having are because the blade isn't a hundred percent perfectly precise. Yeah, that is definitely stiffer than that one. That's, that's a lot lighter. So maybe it's gone through tenth of a mil, two tenths of a mil, maybe. Yeah, that makes a difference on something this scale. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Pop these on the on the top. Oh yeah, that's tight as well. Yeah, that one's tight as well. Very tight. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so as I'm building these and realizing how tight some of these pieces are, it is making me think that I'm not gonna really wanna be taking these apart. If you're going to be moving house or going quite a distance with all your terrain, maybe once a year, it might be worth taking it apart. But I really can't see myself wanting to take these apart regularly. They'll just end up loosening off and eventually breaking and not come back together very well. Let's just try and get those to meet nicely in the middle. Yeah, so made that first mistake there, so be careful you don't do that. Don't overbend these. I'd uh, put a little bit too much curve onto it. Okay, that's more like it. And we'll just see if we can get this join a little bit tighter. Just a case then of making sure the curve of the roof is right. That's the front of the building. The rear. Yeah, pretty good that. Uh, remainder of the sprues we've got. Floor. And then some walkways that go around the outside of the building, which we'll have a look at now. The rest of this is all scattered terrain, which we'll document in another, in a, another video. Let's have a look. So, yeah, I noticed this when I put the chimney on, that that does sit a bit higher if you want it to. So the idea for that is that you can put the floor inside, which it does nicely, actually. Yes. OK, so, yeah, you can either have a wooden floor or a stone floor. That's pretty cool. That's one thing I really like about all of this stuff is that it's uh, double-sided, so, you know, the insides of the buildings all, all look pretty nice. Okay, some little bits you can pop out there, so if you're playing on a gaming mat with mud underneath or grass underneath, those bits will show through. Okay, straight forward there. Pop that on top of there. That will help if you've got a gaming table and you want it to be really immersive. There won't be quite so many harsh lines between your buildings and your map that you're playing on. Yeah. Good that. I like that one. This is a nice touch around the edge, like I said. A lot of reflection from the lights. It's not quite as glossy as it might look under the light. It's definitely a silk card, so there's some sheen to it, but it really is the lights that are making it look like that. Let's have a look at the completed thatch cottage on the tabletop amongst the rest of the terrain to see what it looks like. If you found this video useful, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Drop us a comment if there's anything in particular that you want to mention. 
especially if you think that there's something that you found that would be useful for other people watching this video any build tips for this piece of terrain or the battle system system in general i'm going to cover all the buildings in the village set as well as the ruined village so stay tuned subscribe if you you know don't want to miss out on those and i think we're going to move on to the lake house in the next video